It's been a very full week, and we are continuing in our summer Sabbath series of what it means to seek wholeness, to seek God's shalom, and how that lines up in our Sabbath practice of centering ourselves in friendship with creation and friendship with others and in friendship with God. And so we continue um, our looking at right relationship with God and with one another. Um, and we hear these beautiful words from Paul of a call, a strong call to present ourselves um, and to present ourselves as a living sacrifice that includes the transformation and the renewal of our minds. And as we have gone through this week, there have been some really beautiful holy moments. Um, I know that there are not always holy moments um, in families, and I know that leave takings, whether they, they be in death or in other things like going off to college or transitioning um, from one house to another, um, can be messy. And some are beautiful and sacred, some come as a shock. Um, and are hard to piece together, um, some are just fraught with anger and frustration. And as we give space for all of those, I do want to lift um, the gift that this week was um, with Birdie's ending being one that was a sacred moment. Um, she was able to tell her daughter Jean that it was time, and Jean was able to share back with her that that was okay. That it would be hard, but that it was okay. And Bob was there, um, and we were as we were visiting together and going to say goodbye, I got to be there as he leaned over Bertie to give her a hug and a kiss on her cheek, um, and to see a moment of genuine love and care and family. I have a mentor who's a hospice chaplain who calls herself a midwife to the dying, because even death is just another beginning. But every beginning and every end has things that will be no more and things that will be new that will come. And just like in death, in every ending and beginning and whatever transition we are facing in our own lives, we give it more of a chance to be sacred when we do our cleanup work along the way. And so this mentor of mine would be with families um, who had done the work and who hadn't done the work. Um, and for those who needed a little extra help, she would be there to guide um, and give space for the conversations of, I love you, thank you, I forgive you, do you forgive me? And goodbye. Life is a very funny journey, and we don't ever know what's coming around the bend, and so sometimes ending come and catch us unprepared. And other times we have the chance to be prepared and don't take it, and other times we have the chance and, and are there and are present. And as we look in the midst of all of this, I hope that whether we've just come from an experience in a time of whether we've taken that opportunity or whether we come from a place where we haven't, that in this space, we work with the Holy Spirit um, to do what cleanup work we can and to leave the rest with God. And do we take time together to thank each other, to tell each other that we love them. And even if we don't love the whole person or are, have fallen out of like with the person at the moment, what is the piece of them that we do love and that we can remind ourselves of and center ourselves in and work from there? And where are the places that need forgiveness? And we can't just jump on, well, let me tell you who needs to tell me <laughs> um, of what they need to say and ask for forgiveness for. We've got to first remove the log from our own eyes before we remove the splinter from others. And we've got to be honest and truly confess where we have done harm and where we need to be forgiven. 
And we need to do all of this in the center of Christ because he's the one who has loved us while we were still doing harm and has forgiven us while he was nailed to a cross. And that's the example that is set for us. And we've been together for a year now, and last year we did a lot of talk and worship and in Bible study on what it means to be a disciple and what that looks like. Do you remember? Our questions just nod and let me feel good about myself. Um, our questions from last Lent, right, of disciple, will you pray with me? Disciple, will you trust me? Disciple, will you serve as I have served? Disciple, will you love one another as I have loved you? So we've centered ourselves in those teachings, and now it's time to put that center into our body and into our spirits and, and to start doing the work of that discipleship, that cleanup work of I love you, thank you, I forgive you. Do you forgive me? And if necessary, goodbye. As we come and we do this work together and as we, we start to get into it, we'll start small. We'll start with just figuring out how we can go beyond our friend groups that we have here in the congregation that are our comfort zones. And I'm not asking you to give up your friends. Um, we all need our villages in our life. But I am asking for you to spend a little bit less time with them um, so that you can spend time with others as well. I often think of the Contra dance group that I was a part of. It's a three-hour dance set every Friday. And for the first hour, Hour, there were a lot of regular dancers there who would only dance with the people who had just come and gathered and what was their first time at the dance. So I'm not asking us to give up our friend groups, but what's an intentionality that we can do um, and break up a little bit so that others can have the blessing that we have had and that additional friendships and depth can be grown. And then, and then how do we look at leadership development so that we can use each other's gifts in a sustainable way, right? So that the same people who have been doing the work for over and over and over um, don't feel burnt out while others who have just come in are might be feeling excluded and not having a chance to share their gifts. How do we balance that and how do we look at that intentionally together? So nominations will be coming up and we'll be doing what Paul asks us to do and trying to figure out each other's gifts and where to best place those in our body and to celebrate all of the different skills um, and perspectives that we bring and giving space for all of those so that we can be as whole as God has made it possible for us to be. And we're going to be doing all of this work in the midst of a global church who is gathering in a commission on the way forward and will be reporting back in 2019 with a special general conference of whether we include our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters or not. And we will be doing this in the midst of a nation wrestling and struggling with white supremacy. And those patterns that are there are a part of our worlds that we live in. And so there's going to be some tangling that comes into our church from that as well. And this is where we will do our best to center ourselves in Paul's call, to present all of who we are as a living sacrifice, and to look for the renewing of our minds so that we can be transformed, so that our minds can be like that of Christ more and more, little bit by little bit, so that we will together be able to discern what the will of God is, what is pleasing and right and mature. And it's going to take a lot of maturity and a lot of adulting, and it's going to be rough, and it's going to be messy, but it's going to be worth it because we're gonna see what God can accomplish through us. And we're gonna start that practice with Financial Peace University because I know of no other way to get into the meat of discipleship um, than starting to take a look at finances and the power that has a hold of our lives or how we use or don't use that power well. 
Um, and it's going to be scary, and it's going to be hard, but if there is anything that will help us with Paul's words of not, being, not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought, um, once again, that will be the study of finances, because no matter where we are in our financial journey, there is always something that we can be doing more faithfully and stewarding better. And so we're going to do that journey together, and we're going to start it, and we're going to start practicing what it is like to bust up those patterns that conform to this world. And we're going to see together what it is to love each other and to trust each other, to forgive each other, to ask for forgiveness, and to find healing together, to find a depth in right relationship with God and one another that we haven't yet discovered. I've been talking with a few of you about this, and all I can say is we've got a great seven-layer dip going on here, and we are perfect at the cheese and sour cream, but it's time for beans and guacamole. And so we're going to go there together, and we're going to enjoy it together, and the layers are going to get all messed up together. It's not going to be the beautiful presentation that it was at the start. Um, but there is a God who is Savior of this world, who has brought forth life from death, who will bring a touch of joy made complete and life made abundant in this process because that is our goal and that is our vision and that is why we do the messy work of aligning ourselves with God and one another in right relationship so that this fullness and this abundance might wash over us and bless us and our church and our city. So I hope you're ready to take the dare with me and to jump into this together as the priesthood of all believers. Amen. We like to end worship with uh, thoughts for what we can commit to in the coming weeks so that Sundays um, don't stay at Sunday but continue on. Um, Gary has given us a phenomenal testimony of how we can jump into this very anxiety-ridden, um, scary work and come through in a fullness that we never knew before. So if you haven't signed up for Financial Peace University, um, please give serious consideration to do so. Um, I will be there as well. Um, and I'm going in with a little trepidation of what it's going to require me to change, but a commitment that I know it'll be worth it. Um, we can also continue to reflect on what we can do to support Anna and Nathan and Liberia's needs. They have left um, a little piece um, of cloth, an agricultural tool, and frame, and we'll get a picture from them. Um, but every time that we gather, and we will be looking to keep them in our prayers um, and remember that relationship and that work um, that is happening um, in a different continent, but is happening in God's hands and in our community. Um, and, and that kingdom work takes resources, and so we'll pray about the financial resources um, that they need and continue to give and undergird their work there. Um, and then also in terms of just what's been going on in our city, um, think about talking with someone of a different ethnicity about the protests in Charlottesville and, Bar and Boston, um, the terrorism in Barcelona, um, or the importance of uh, Confederate statues staying up or coming down. Um, Beth and I had a really phenomenal talk. Um, this past week and I love talking with her because we come from different perspectives but I always learn something um, from our conversations and she'll say things to me like that and that one put a pin on it I'm gonna have to go home and think on that one some more and I'll get back to you um, but there's always something um, that we can learn and gain an understanding in search of right relationship and so I just ask that you Find one of these or another one that God is putting on your heart um, that we do a little bit of practicing this coming week of what it means to be the body of Christ, of what it means to let the Holy Spirit um, break up the patterns that we are conforming to of this world and renew our minds and transform ourselves as we seek to follow Christ. Amen. <laughs>